Hey everyone, Cindy here. Today I want to tell you about making a series of ATCs. A series of artist trading cards are just like the regular cards. They're two and a half by three and a half inches. That's the standard size. And when you're working with a series, the card faces have a similar design or they work off of the same theme. And many artists like to number the cards in their series. In this example, I'm going to be making my cards all with the same uh, watercolor wash background. Now I'm using a template here that is slightly smaller than three and a half by two and a half, and that's because I'm going to be doing uh, line art on my ATCs in this series. And when I do line art, I like to make the art itself slightly smaller and then mount it on a piece of cardstock of a uh, complementary color that kind of frames my art. So after tracing out my cards here I'm going to start my drawings and I'm going to make sure they all have a similar um, feel to them as I do the drawings. Pin strokes that are the same nature or patterns that look very much like each other. I'll use the same color scheme throughout this uh, series of cards and uh, probably have a ongoing theme as well. Now I have my first five cards of the series ready to cut out. I want to make sure they are represented as a quality piece of art on a sturdy backing that complements. So I'm going to mount them on cardstock colors that will help my art pop. Now I can get 10 ATC backings from one standard letter size sheet of cardstock. This is the um, grid that I use to do that cutting. Let me show you how this works. You'll take a standard size 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock and we're going to make our first slice down the portrait edge at 3.5 and, and we'll call this piece A. And then the next slice will be at two and a half inches and we'll call these two leftover pieces B and C. So then we're going to take sheet A, this little strip here, and we're going to cut it several times at two and a half inches. This will give us um, our ATC backings. And then we're going to stack these last two strips together and cut them at three and a half inches. And when we're finished doing that, so there's no more cardstock left, we will have 10 pieces of ATC backings and these three tiny little extra scraps. So for this series, I decided to mount each piece of art on a different color of cardstock. And you can see how the color I've chosen has helped make the art stand out and it provides a nice little frame around my drawings too. Now I'm ready to add the identifying information. I use a fill in the blank type uh, form that I created ahead of time on my computer and I just print them out as I need them. You could also use uh, mailing labels with this information printed on them or you could simply write the information on the back of the card if you prefer. The directions for the swap usually indicates what information should be on the back which for a card series includes the series name, the title of my ATC, um, the numbering system that I want to use, the date when I created the card, and my signature. Now I roll mine through my Xyron machine to turn them into stickers and make them easy to put on the back, but you wouldn't necessarily have to do this. You, like I said, you could actually just uh, write the information on the back of your card if you prefer. This is just an easy way for me to do it. You could also use a uh, glue stick or something like that if you want to. So after running it through the machine, I cut them apart and then I apply them to the back of the cards, making sure I have the right one on going in the right direction here on my card. Fumble finger Cindy. And then I go ahead and sign my piece of art. I don't actually do the numbering until the very end. And the reason I wait to number all of my art is because sometimes I'll botch up one of the cards. And then that changes the count completely when I do that, when I decide to discard one of them. 
don't do that very often, but you know, it does happen. So we'll get these all uh, identified here on the back. And then we'll be finished with this series. And I'd like to show you another one I did recently. This was my uh, snowflake series that I did. It's got a little shiny bling on it here. Just like before, I start off by drawing my cards out on a sheet of paper using my template. And then I created the card faces all in a similar design. Snowflakes this go around. And then I stenciled some ink color along the edges and in the center of each snowflake to give it a hazy look, kind of like a snowy day. Let's break away from this project just a second and let me show you how to do that technique. It's super easy. You'll need a stencil brush and some stamper's ink. Some artists like to press the lid of their stamp pad down to collect ink in the top part here, like this. And that's not such a bad idea, especially if you're using a brush that you've used in a, a, a different color. That way you don't contaminate your ink pad with whatever color might be on your brush before. And I have a different brush for pretty much all of my different ink colors, so I just put it right here in the pad. And I'm just pouncing the brush on top of the edges of my cardstock here, and it gives a really soft um, a color effect here. Something that I could not uh, achieve very easily using, say, colored pencils or markers or something like that. This is soft, transparent. I really like the effect we get here. Isn't that pretty? After that, I did another uh, ink direct to paper technique where you slide the ink pad along the edges and you get like an ink frame. Notice how the top ones uh, look a little more bland than the bottom ones in this picture. The bottom ones, I applied this inking technique and I also did it on the pink ATC backings that I used for this series. So let's break away and I'll show you how to do that. Again, it's super easy. You just take an ink pad and you slide it along the edge of your cardstock and it collects ink. Sometimes I'll kind of swipe it across the top to get a little bit more on the top edges. I know it doesn't look like much, but it, it makes a big difference in the final outcome. It gives it a finished look. I think it does anyway. Okay, so going back to my Snowflake series here, I attached the ATC to the uh, cardstock backing. And then I went back with a colored pencil and added a little bit of shadowing around some of the elements on my card. See how this just that tiny bit of uh, shadowing makes such a big difference on these. Then I took a silver gel pen and added a little bit of bling. These uh, little silver dots here have a shine to them. I thought this blingy effect was kind of nice for a series of snowflakey cards. What do you think? I like to do extra little elements like this on my hand-drawn cards. Here's another set that I added some eyelets to. So I began this series the same way, drawing the ATC templates out on a sheet of paper and then uh, creating my art. Then this time I cut each ATC with rounded corners as well as the backing that I was going to use. I added eyelets to each of the four corners before I put them onto the backing because I wanted the red to show through these eyelets and I didn't want the rough side of the eyelets to be um, seen on the other side. And here's what they look like in the end. So let me show you one more series I did quickly. This was a Joy series and I drew out my ATCs on a sheet of paper just as before and I then drew the word Joy on each of these cards and filled them in with lots of fun patterns. And as you can see here I added some inking around the edges just as before. Uh, this gave it a little bit of a finished look on my cards and I rounded just the opposite corners leaving the other two corners straight. I felt that added to the whimsical look of these uh, joyful words here in this card series. Okay, so that gives you the basic creative process that I use when I'm working on a series of ATCs, and I hope it'll give you ideas for the next time you join a swap with us over at lineweaving.com forums. Our next swap is going to start this week, as a matter of fact, so come join the fun.